Hamu hamu hanam hem. Hamu hamu nuku nuku a hua. Hamu 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 nuku nuku. Hamu hamu nuku nuku. Hamu hamu nuku. Hamu hamu nuku nuku a hua. Hamu hamu nuku nuku a Hamu 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 nuku nuku apa? Ah. Hamu hamu nuku nuku apa? Hamu hamu nuku nuku apa? Hamu hamu nuku nuku apa? Hamu hamu nuku nuku. Hamu hamu nuku nuku apa? Hamu hamu nuku nuku apa? Ah. Did I get it? Hello everyone out there in YouTube land, I am James of Cigar and Bar, and I'm going to be cooking up one of my first tiki drinks of not winter, now that it's spring. I just recently picked up this new book and a bottle of rum, which is by Wayne Curtis, A History of the New World in Ten Cocktails. And uh, it's no secret that this book has been used as a, a source of information for a number of different cocktail smiths, including Martin Kate of Smuggler's Cove and Beach Bum Berry of the uh, Sip and Safari and Potions of the Caribbean fame. So I'm going to be getting into a couple more rum drinks coming up. I'm going to be playing with some of the information I'm getting out of this book. But the other thing that I bought at the time was this fantastic tiki mug of an anglerfish and uh, I'm gonna have close-ups on Instagram and I'm gonna have uh, a link to this below in case you want to see what it is and uh, I'm gonna be explaining in a minute what this little contraption is that's sticking out of the top but today we are gonna make a cocktail from the Smuggler's Cove book it's a hamo hamo nuku nupua it's a hamo hamo nuku nuku apua hamo hamo nuku nupua hamo 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 nuku nuku apua it is a cocktail that is named after the state fish of Hawaii. Uh, so I thought fish themed, perfect. I was looking for a fish themed cocktail for my fish themed tiki glass, so we're gonna go with it. There are two different drinks that you can make that are listed here in the book. Uh, the Hamo Hamo Nuku Nuku, the Hamo Hamo Nuku Nuku Apua is made with gin. And then there's the La Willy Willy Nuku Nuku Oi, La Willy Willy Nuku Nuku Oi Oi, which is made with rum. La Willy Willy Nuku Nuku Oi Oi is a lot easier to say than, than Hamu Hamu Nuku Nuku Apua. And I've been practicing. But we're going to dive right in and we're going to make this drink today. Now before we make the drink, I'm going to explain the garnish here. We're going to do some stuff. I just want to get this started now because I don't want to sit here while my drink dilutes trying to work on our garnish. So we're going to start with this one. This tiki mug is fish that is based on the anglerfish. And I'm going to put a video below to the Z Frank More True Facts About the Anglerfish. If you haven't seen it, it's hilarious. All of this stuff is hilarious and for the most part, I believe, factual. But the anglerfish is known most famously for having a dangly wavy bit in front that glows bioluminescently to attract its prey. And I thought that for a tiki drink, we can do something with that. We can have some fun. I saw in the photo where this was being sold that they were garnishing it with a little flower on the end, but we're gonna kick that up a notch. Although a flower wouldn't be out of place considering the cocktail here calls for an edible orchid to be the garnish, but let's have some fun, because we can. I'm gonna take a piece of bread here, okay, gonna cut off the crust, I'm just going to cut roughly a postage stamp sized piece of bread off of there. And this stand that I've got in here is, hopefully you can see this is a little thin, is a coil on the bottom several times around and then shoots up to a coiled elbow here, which then sticks out to a looped end. And uh, it's a little wobbly. But trust me, when we fill this with ice, this won't be moving nearly so much. So let's take our bread here. I'm going to open up the little bend that I put at the top. 
and I'm gonna grab this piece of bread with it and just kind of stab it so that it stays put there. And I take a torch here and I'm gonna toast it. Uh, you couldn't start with toast, but I'm just gonna do it this way. Get it nice and browned. Hopefully not set off my smoke alarm, which is two rooms away. Okay, that's nice and toasty. And we're just gonna put that aside. Add into the tropical atmosphere, you may hear my birds Tango and Romeo over here, my lovely cockatiels. I get questions about them, about what kind of bird I have, that's where they are, and they will be featured in an upcoming video when I do a jungle bird, but that's not today. So let's get out of the cocktail. First step is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. I'm a big fan of checking out the uh, reduced price produce and meat and bread in stores. Not just because I want to be thrifty, but also because I don't like food waste. I don't like when big grocery stores throw out food that wasn't sold. So if I can use it for a cocktail, it doesn't matter if it's in its prime or not, it'll probably do a great job. And these ones happen to be organic lemons for about 20 cents a lemon less than the regular non-organic ones. So that's a good find. That's three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Next calls for three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice. Next is a half an ounce of orgeau, or orgeat. So immediately this doesn't seem to be very sweet. So we're almost out of ingredients here and this is the sweetest thing we've had so far. Calls for two ounces of gin. Today I'm gonna to use my Plymouth gin. And two dashes of Peychaud's bitters. First one's a little weak, add a little more. There we go. And now, shake with ice. We're gonna do one whole cube, and one cracked cube. And then we shake. frosty on the outside there. Now this drink calls for open pour into the glass, but I'm gonna do something a, bit, a little bit special because I got a special glass. I got this ice mold the other day that makes perfectly cubed little bits of pebble ice here. And I love the look of it. So I just wanted to fill it up with that uh, little cubed ice here. So consequently, I'm gonna do a uh, strained pour out of my shaker. Let's get that on in there. It's looking good. Slide a straw in here. Now as for our garnish, I'm gonna take this toast and I'm gonna add a couple drops of pure lemon extract onto the toast. This bottle is not conducive to pouring very neatly. And then, now that I have the lights dimmed, hopefully we can see this, I'm gonna give this pretty lady a torch. Ah, well, let's give it a taste here in the darkened depths lit by our anglerfish. That's surprisingly bright. It is great. It's um, the gin almost disappears into the uh, into the pineapple. It's quite good though. Another benefit of this drink is because the, uh, the straw is so far from the flame, you can drink it while it's a little more theatric. Get some light back in and we'll do with actual tasting notes here. I can just barely taste a little bit of anise from the Peychaud's bitters. The lemon and the pineapple are doing a lot of heavy lifting here. It's not a lot of gin flavor. I would love to try this, the rum version. So maybe I'll actually just, this isn't quite the right way to do this, but let me find one of my lighter rums in here. Let's try some, some St. James from Agricole. And to that two ounces of gin, I'm gonna add one whole ounce of rum. Because this is a, should be a darker drink because it's a, uh, it's a deep sea fish.
Whoa. An ounce was a bit much, because now I've overpowered the pineapple. But that does taste good. I'm going to put it back on. I'm not going to rework it, but take my word for it. A quarter to a half ounce is enough if you want to make a gin and rum version of this. Um, and the, this drier rum, the uh, rum agricole in St. James, is absolutely the way to go on this. You don't want something too sweet, because like I said earlier, it's not a very sweet drink. The sweetest thing you add in there is a half an ounce of the orgeau. And uh, you don't want to bog this down the sugar, but that has turned out quite well. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video and hope you get a chance to make a hamo hamo nuku nuku wapo. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hope you get a chance to make a hamo hamo nuku nuku wapo. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hope you get a chance to make a hamo hamo nuku nuku wapo. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you get a chance to make a hamo hamo nuku nuku wapo. And uh, if you do, let me know a how the drink turned out and. B, how you fared saying the name when you tried to tell someone about it. I am James of Cigar and Bar. This has been Cocktail Corner, and I will see you next time I make another tiki drink or at least something cold to have in my hand. Cheers. Cheers.